It's time for a lovely barbecue, so gather round, cause pigmen are so incredibly versatile that there is no questioning their impact on potential survival. And it's a shame I haven't discussed them yet, cause they are meals on wheels. Loyal workers and combatants, and manure producing machines that also seem to come with an interesting dark side that we too can exploit for our gain. But today, we do our best to cover it all. And to begin, we gotta know where to look. Our porky companions can actually be dotted about most of the constant itself, but a surefire way to find them is to find the fat man himself, the Pig King. You'll likely also find a pig village alongside his domain, but we will actually be touching on those in a bit. For now, I just need you to try to locate the birch biome, as the Pig King is very, very likely just sitting on a grassland patch on his butt within one. When the dude is awake, you may offer him trinkets and food in exchange for gold. And you could see that exchange rate right here. And one of the best ways to amass a sea of gold is to exchange wires obtained through clearing the ruins. If you do so, you'll have more gold than you know what to do with. Oh, but one last note, exchanging the figure trinkets will also result in receiving the corresponding figure sketch, making life a little bit easier when it comes to potential shadow piece showdowns, or heck, even just some decorations for yourself. Other than that, the Pig King doesn't really have a function outside of the Lunar Pig King event, but when that rolls around, we will discuss it again. But about those pig villages we just mentioned, the settlements themselves are actually set pieces via world generation, and they can actually be manipulated to spawn in, in a sense. For example, if you leave your world size at default, you have a chance of one to three villages spawning via said generation. But if you up it to even just a large world, you practically guarantee at least two whole villages. But why are these villages important enough to even note? Well, one, they are home to a potential nine pigs in total. But you may also find a plethora of carrots, flowers, grass, and berry farms planted around the settlements. And not only are they easily accessibly available to you, the surrounding pigmen won't even throw a tantrum if they see you making off with their crap, so just steal away for your own pleasure. These settlements can come in all shapes and sizes, but will most certainly always provide you with useful and plentiful materials needed for survival. But you know what doesn't want us to survive? The distant cousins of our porky friends, guardian pigs. Guardian pigs are always aggressive, regardless of who you are playing, so stuffing food in their mouths to appease them is no longer gonna be an option for you. Heck, they won't even eat food off the ground like the normal pigs. They spawn from structures called pig torches, and these structures are actually the spawn point of said guardian pigs, after about three days of them being dead so. Seeing as such, if you happen upon one of these set pieces, you can work to kill the pig's garden it, wall off the torches, and now you have yourself an area of infinite light sources for you to dwell in. Plus, whatever resource the pigs were garden is now yours as well, so bonus there. Oh, by the way, if you're having trouble killing all the pigs, leading other mobs to them can fix that problem for you. Guardian pigs just love punching things, so just make sure they're not punching you. But on to the mob that was supposed to be the whole damn centerpiece of the video, Pigmen. Well actually, we are going to talk about where they live first, so don't lynch me, but that's pig houses. I'm sure many of you have stumbled upon these suckers throughout the constant, but to find a number of them, you will have to head to the locations we've been mentioning earlier. But you can tell if a house holds a pig at dusk or night via the light within. But if a house doesn't hold a pigman, it will after about four days of one being dead so. We have discussed this many times, but hammering houses for your own use later is highly recommended. So please smash and grab as you please, but remember that you'll need to dismantle two homes to equal one for you. But on to the pigs themselves. Pigmen are actually neutral mobs. Unless, of course, you're playing our web boy Weber or our soul hopping Wartox. Then, 
All they really want is just punch your butt into the dirt. But they themselves don't really do much unless directed to or provoked. All they do is simply walk around and eat. Unless, of course, something or someone gets involved. And if the thing they eat is actually a veggie, a fruit, petals, or light bulbs, they will actually poop out manure for your pleasure. And this can actually occur every 15 seconds. But make note though, pigmen are also afraid of the dark and will scramble for any source of light nearby. And they think an attack on one is an attack on all. So be very mindful or you may be starting Pork War 3. But why make war when you can make love? Feed a pig or two some foodies and you'll soon have an army at your back. And I do realize that I just questioned going to war and all, but don't listen to me, folks. You and your piggy loyalists can now team up to take down some medium to big bats with, honestly, relative ease. But I really wouldn't rely on them too much. Unless, of course, you're fighting a Yukis, then by all means, let those guys do all the work. Heck, loyal pigs are so loyal that you can even command them to fight other pigs and start and end that Pork War 3 we talked about without even lifting a finger, to be honest. Pig wars are kind of good for pig loot, but you know me by now. I believe them to be completely worthless, but more on that later. But again, pigs themselves aren't worthless. They are so versatile that they can even be used to chop trees, and heck, they do a damn good job at it too. Pigmen speed up the menial task of wood chopping so much that not using them is shameful. Oh, and by the way, being near allied pigs also grants a plus 25 sanity per minute aura that is honestly incredibly noteworthy considering how other sanity auras have worked in the past. And O times two. Pigmen can also wear headgear, and that includes armor pieces. And yes, the pigs will receive the same effects of whatever hat they are wearing as you would. But on that dark side I mentioned at the top of this one, the transformation of a pigman into a pig. This phenomenon occurs each full moon night, but we can actually force the transformation ourselves too, but we'll showcase that very soon. For now, remember those houses we stole along the way? We can actually set them up as seen here to construct our very own pig farms. Now, I've done two full videos on the topic already, so I am not gonna dive deep into it today. But I always recommend doing this simply for the guaranteed loot that comes from these foul beasts. You get one pig butt and two meat every single time. But, like with most things in Don't Starve, fowl can be turned to profit. Because if we feed a normal pig four pieces of monster meat, it will be forcibly turned into a were pig. Then, if we drop some petals and light bulbs on the ground, we can begin production of one of the easiest, fastest, and most efficient manure farms in the entire game. This is how you get a crap ton of crap for your pleasure really freaking fast. Oh, but be very mindful of that minus 100 sanity per minute aura they have, because that's a doozy. And in the end, the meat and butts they will be dropping can be used in a number of recipes to munch on and fight with, like the intrepid ham bat or the football helmet. You can even smash butts together to create the piggy pack to carry more loot on your adventures but still kind of slow you down. The goggles needed to navigate the treacherous sandstorm during summer come from the deaths of pigs, along with the clothes to combat the heat. And of course, we got more pig homes, umbrellas, and saddles too. Pigmen are so ridiculously vital when you truly break it all down. But one final note, spiders, pigs, and merms just adore each other. So please, take advantage of their lover's quarrel and get all the bloody loot you can from it. But there you have it everyone, a guide on one of the many mobs I call the constant home. We've learned what makes them tick, what makes them serve you, and best of all, what makes them poop for your pleasure. I hope this helped. Well wishes to all out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.